we, we've got people that are coming in saying, well, we want to change history, we want to change what kids are being taught in history, we want to change biology. And I think that is really narcissistic and arrogant and rewriting history instead of letting people learn. Do you have any examples of professors that have lost tenure in that way? Uh, I do. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching Dr. Phil versus Dave Pakman, one of my favorites. They discuss a few issues such as the woke washing, I just made that word up, of history, as well as cancel culture in academia. And there are also a few very teachable moments and lessons that we can actually implement in our own lives here, which I will explain to you more at the end of the video. So with that, let's get into the first bit about history. What about the ones that fall under what you call the tyranny of the fringe? Because I don't think the smartphone example falls under that category, right? No, that's why I say some of this is the unintended consequences of like technology. But yeah. then we've got uh, some where we've got people that are just trying to change uh, some of the core values in America, core values of family, trying okay. to rewrite history. Uh, and we, we've got people that are coming in saying, well, we want to change history. We want to change what kids are being taught in history. We want to change biology. We want to change uh, all of the things that we have for a hundred years uh, had empirical data to support. But tell me uh, more, about, I don't want to change. gloss over this. I, I want, really want to understand this. Changing history. OK, what what was the history that used to be taught that now has been changed by the tyranny of the fringe? Well, I, you know, pick an area. We can talk about biology where we have always had two sexes. But what about but history? Now, Just to pick history, not biology, because you said history, biology. What about history? Well, there's a lot of history to biology, and you would be missing a big point to pretend that there's not historical biology. Uh, but if you want to talk about history, we can uh, not in biology, but just talk about the history of mankind. Yeah, we've got areas where they don't want to talk about slavery. We we had one uh, a, a group of people that wanted to start describing slavery in history books as involuntary relocation. Right. This was not involuntary relocation. This was slavery. And we've got people that are wanting to rename schools because people that were doing what were the mores and folkways of the times now would clearly uh, be doing things against the law, certainly against mores and folkways, because they were slave owners at the time, uh, are saying, well, now we have to tear down these statues, we have to rename these schools, and we don't want to teach about them. We have to learn from our mistakes as a society. We can't pretend those things didn't happen. They did happen. They were dark and ugly times in American history. We don't want to pretend those things weren't there. So let that, me see that, if that, I understand, crazy. because there's a bunch of stuff. So if I hear you correctly, just quickly, guys, don't forget to smash that like button if you're enjoying this video, if you want to see it go far and wide, and if you want to subscribe to the channel, if you get lots of value from these videos, then I would be so, so grateful if you would hit that big red button. Back to it. You're not in agreement with those who want to minimize the tragedy and brutality of slavery, but you also want to keep the school names. If a school is named after a slave owner, you're also OK with that because it will remind us and we will learn from it. Am I understanding that correctly? I think you're oversimplifying what I'm saying, what okay. I'm saying is if you're wanting to change American history to pretend that these people did not exist and you want to measure them by today's yardstick rather than the yardstick at the time, that's what is referred to as presentism. And that's like saying, OK, you're going to drive through a neighborhood and the speed limit is 20 and you drive through that neighborhood doing 20, and then they come along and say, you know what, we're going to change the speed limit to 10, and we're gonna give you a ticket for speeding 
when the speed limit uh, was 20. Mm. It's now 10, but you weren't speeding when you were doing 20, but now it's 10. We're going to give you a retroactive ticket for doing what was acceptable at the time. That's called presentism. We're going to take what was done back at the time, pull it up into the current time, and condemn you for not knowing what was going to be acceptable 200 years later mm. than when you did it. And I think that is really narcissistic and arrogant and rewriting history instead of letting people learn from the mistakes that mis were made in America and that we need to learn from so we don't make those mistakes again. Because some of those people also did some really good things at the time. Hmm. We don't need to endorse everything they did, but we need to acknowledge the good and the bad. So well done there by Dr. Villain. I really like the analogy that he uses there about the speed limit because that's very accurate. And it's a good way of illuminating the ridiculousness of the idea that leftists will push. That we should take down any statue and rename anything that was named after a slave owner or represents a slave owner because it's just so offensive. Furthermore, I also think that Dr. Phil was very genuine in his approach here. And he did a good job of building some rapport by first using the mischaracterization of slavery as his first example of how people are rewriting history. Something that ideologically David Pakman would really be pleased with, and he was by the sounds of him. But he was less impressed by Phil's basic common sense observation that we should be trying to destroy anything and rename everything throughout history because of our woke crusade, the cultural revolution that we are enduring. And I don't know about you guys, but I find it so unbelievably disingenuous when leftists will sit there and say, what are you talking about? Where is this history that's being changed? What examples do you have of science being altered for ideological purposes? Well, I mean, you can try and narrow the playing field or move the goalposts all you'd like, but if the conversation is a free and flowing one, there are a few pretty good examples. The best place to start is obviously the biological reality of what it means to be a man and a woman, something that leftist ideologues have come along in the past seven minutes and taken a big old dump on. You could also look to the fact that, I don't know, People coming out of the education system these days believe that white people are uniquely evil throughout history, and they believe that white people are the only ones who engaged in slavery. Like, having to learn racism is a really interesting concept. How did you learn racism, just quickly? Just, yeah, because of like all the things that we were taught in school. Or how about the recent controversy where AI programmers in Silicon Valley are effectively writing white people out of history. Something that actually this week I went on Valuetainment and discussed. And by the way, guys, in case you didn't know, I've got a travel channel where this year we're gonna be posting lots of different vlogs. And I've just posted a behind the scenes video from Valuetainment where you get to see the entire studio, the backstage and how it all works. So I'll leave that link below and make sure you guys check out Rattlesnake Travel. And guys, onto the next part where they discuss cancel culture in academia. Now I want you to keep a very close eye in this next clip on exactly what Dr. Phil's arguments are and how Dave Pakman goes about reframing the conversation. I'll check in after. When it comes to cancel culture, something you've also written and spoken about, what do you think is the prototypical or emblematic example of someone who was unfairly canceled over the last few years? Well, I think the idea of cancel culture is more than one person, and I'm not going to speak specifically about one person. What I'm going to say <laughs> is you've got people that want their speech instead of free speech. And so they will come in and talk about in a university uh, certain things that can't be shared, can't be talked about. We've got universities that have put out uh, language that they highly recommend their professors to not use. One of them that jumps out at me from the University of California is they were encouraged to no longer say America is the land of opportunity or the job should go to the most qualified person. They were saying, you can't say those things anymore because they um, 
are considered to be oppressive. Mm. And if you have university faculty, even tenured faculty, uh, that talk about those things or ask their students to take positions that are contrary uh, to what they believe, what the students believe, they get grieved against, they get suspended, they get disciplined, uh, and in a sense, canceled at that. You know, point. that's interesting. Lost- let, let me weigh in on that a little bit, because that's very interesting. You know, in preparation for the interview, I looked at the academic setting because a lot of times when we talk about cancellation, we talk about, oh, a comedian who said or did something and then for a while they didn't have shows or something like that. You know, Louis C.K., for example, et cetera. I looked for the revocation of tenure for professors in a lot of these schools that you talk about or allude to. And really, it seems that when tenure is being stripped, it's for real wrongdoing. Plagiarism is uncovered sexual harassment of students, et cetera. I really struggle to find evidence in a country of 330 million people of tenure being stripped just because of using the wrong language. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't wacky memos that go out or I'm with you that this stuff exists anecdotally. But if we think about what is happening big picture, I actually struggle to really find examples of this as an epidemic. Tell, Tell me where I may be missing something. Well, I don't know what you mean by epidemic. Well, that it's happening that that professors are being stripped of tenure, not for serious violations of their, uh, you know, like I said, sexual harassment, plagiarism, being uh, uh, involved in criminality, but just because they said something that is maybe not politically correct. I'm just not seeing that tenure is being stripped from professors for that. Do you have any examples of professors that have lost tenure in that way? Uh, I do, and I'll provide it to you. How's that? I'll get you a list and send it to you. That would be I would love to do that, because if that is happening, uh, I want to expose that and I want to talk about that. So you guys might have picked up on that very slimy trick that was played there. So Dr. Phil clearly said that the faculty, even tenured, which means that he's not necessarily exclusively referring to tenured professors. He said that if they essentially don't toe the ideological line, they get, quote, grieved against disciplined, suspended, and in a sense, canceled. He chose his words wisely there, and that is a very true statement. But then Pacman comes in with the shameless straw man and says, hold on a second, wait, wait, wait. I've done my research. Where are the examples? Where is this epidemic of professors losing their tenure due to not saying the right politically correct thing? At which point, Dr. Phil drops the ball big time. He'd been doing really well until this moment when he says, Yes, there are, and I'm gonna provide you the sources. You see, what happened there was that Pacman was losing, and then he successfully and intentionally changed the framing of the conversation to try and catch Dr. Phil out and to suit his own narrative. And unfortunately, Dr. Phil deserves half the blame there because he fell for it. At this point, Phil should have said no. I didn't say that there was an epidemic of professors who were losing tenure. I said that there were faculty, including professors, who were being disciplined, suspended, grieved against, and in a sense, canceled. That's very, very different. And it's such an important distinction that he had to make there. I mean, it's pretty common knowledge that it's very, very difficult for a tenured professor to lose their tenure. And what David Pakman did there was just one of the most slimy ways to not engage with the real issue, but rather just try and win the debate or win the exchange. That is happening. You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you. You see guys, when we have these conversations in our own personal life and in these types of situations, this is why it's so important to choose our words so carefully and also to listen very carefully to what your interlocutor or your friend, family, whatever it is, to what they're saying as well. Use the words that properly convey exactly what you want to get across. Don't be hyperbolic. Say what you mean, mean what you say, and then be very careful that people don't misconstrue you and reframe the conversation luck happened just there. And this is something that in my own personal life, I've only started to take pretty seriously over the past few years. And it's just through listening to Jordan Peterson. Peterson is big on being precise in your speech. And now I see the importance of it. And if you can really do that, it can really elevate you above the pack, especially as our collective cultural discourse gets lowered and lowered by the year. And just to cap it off, guys, some examples that he could have used there would have been Brett Weinstein being basically chased out of Evergreen College. We are here to support, and we want to dismantle anti-blackness. Get this point. 
And also the reprimanding of Lindsay Shepard at Wilfrid Laurier College in Canada by her Maoist professors for basically playing a Jordan Peterson clip in her lecture. So with that one, guys, hope to read lots of interesting comments below. And if you guys would like to find me, you can hit those links. Remember, I'm going to leave my travel channel below. You can check out our vlogs. It's going to be a big year for that. So looking forward to doing plenty of them. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel right here, if you'd like to watch another video, click right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.